Shirley Rice was a Hamilton housewife married with three kids when she met a man named Rocco Papalia who said he was a shoe salesman and thus began a friendship that turned into an affair. And that turned into her becoming mistress to the mob. It's six years now since Shirley Rice left the Papalia family to live under police protection in another city and with a new identity. Her life changed when undercover police picked up her voice on a bug planted in a car belonging to a member of the Papalia family. That conversation gave police enough evidence to press charges against a family member, and Shirley Rice was faced with the dilemma of testifying against him in court. I don't know whether they knew what right or wrong was. Don't forget they were raised as the Papalias. I'm sure that their, their older brother set rules and they just went along. That's What's Johnny it? Papalia, their older yes. brother. What was he like? Cold. Just cold. That's all I can say. Were you afraid of him? I had vibes. I didn't want to talk to him. I'm sure he didn't want to talk to me. It wasn't like a love affair. I think I was impressed with his power and that's what that's what attracted me and of course that next thing you know we were having an affair. Mm -hmm. And this is a third brother, Frank Papalia, who also liked Shirley's company. He was, he's a lot different than his brother. He's a little bit, um, he's colder. He doesn't show his emotion. And he really doesn't know how to even make small talk. No matter, it wasn't like Rocco, it was, um, it, it wasn't, it's romantic, it wasn't, no, I'm not romantic, that's for you. Um, you just knew, you went to bed with him. That's it, you had a, a brief fling with him. If you wanted to be with him, you, you did this. I'm not saying you did this with everybody, but after all, it was Rocco's brother, Frankie. You can't go wrong. You're still in the, in the clique. You saw it as a favor, essentially, that you were doing. That's the whole thing. I think that is the word, it's a favor. You did favors for them because they did a lot for you, the family, the Papalia family and their heavies sat up in the corner. You all, there was always meetings going on, always meetings going on. You never knew what they were talking about, but you knew it was important. Who belonged to the key club? A hell of a variety of people. Aldermen, lawyers, lots of lawyers. A lot of lawyers were friends of the family, but they didn't want anybody to know they were friends of them. And that's what bothered me. Uh, I remember coming back to Hamilton once and went in for a drink at a bar. I probably knew about 20 lawyers in that place. And I walked in and after all this problem with the Papalias, and I was an outcast, I think I cleared the room. I have never seen so many lawyers get up and walk out in my life. Why? They'd been, I had drinks with them, I knew them. Now all of a sudden, I was the, the heavy. I was the bad guy and they didn't want anything to do with me. So there's a lot of lawyers in Hamilton that are very, very chummy with the family. I was 25 years old, and all of a sudden, there I am with people waiting on you and catering to you, and it, let's face it, I enjoyed it. I liked the power that they projected, and over the years, it rubbed off on me. If you wanted something, they were good people to know. Oh, the best. That's right. And my dad happened to be a very small time bookie. Someone came in, talked to Rocco, and I um, overheard him say that there was a small time bookie on the beach named Tellard, wouldn't pay up, wouldn't pay up. And I didn't know what that meant, but I heard my dad's name. And I turned to Rocco, and it's the first time I ever interfered in any of his conversations. And I said, wait a minute, Tellard, that's my dad. And he said, oh, he had no idea called the guy back and said, forget it, lay off. What was the style in which the Papalias lived? Where did they take you? What did they spend? To New York City for dinner, fly down, have dinner, uh, meet interesting people, and money was no object. I, I had a sense of humor and I made them laugh. Not many people can make them laugh and forget their day-to-day -day things that they have to do, and I did. Is that what they generally want from the women who are around them? Yes, I, I'm sure. Relaxation, refreshment from yes. the world, the oh, dirty sure. world they deal in? I think so. 
Because if, if it wasn't that way, then why would I have been around for 17 years? I was, I was, um, cute. They liked it. And they liked the things I said to them. Eventually, they thought so highly of you that they asked you to show other women in the mob how they should behave. They didn't come right out and say, you know, we want you to do this and, and help this girl or anything. But they say, look, why don't you just give her a few pointers? You know, you've been around for a long time. And uh, you, this is what I did. What, what kind of advice would you pass along? How to dress, for example? Definitely not flashy. Never flashy. Because you could hear them talking about other women at the bar. Say they were sitting there and they said, look at that one. They were flashy. What is she doing in here? She's giving this place a bad name. You were running a finishing a school for the mob, were you? <laughs> I guess if that's what you want to call it, all I know is that I am finished. As far as the relationship with them go now, I'm finished. That's fine on my part now. Shirley was finished when Frank Papalia, whose car was bugged by the police, asked her for a favor, to have sex with his lawyer at the time. Also involved was this man, Steve Cochis, a convicted criminal and associate of Frank Papalia. But it began with the lawyer. He was a criminal lawyer. His lawyer at the time. Frank's lawyer? Yes. And that's when <laughs> they had Frank Papalia's car bugged. The police? Yes, and they were there at the Holiday Inn. So they knew this arrangement? Mm -hmm. They knew Frank had asked you yes. to go to bed with his lawyer, yes. to show him a good time, mm -hmm. and that he was going to pay you for it? Yeah, do him a favor, because it was important to him. And I did. The police needed you as a witness to say, yes, I was paid for these services. I was paid to go to bed with this well-known criminal lawyer. Yes, they did need me. They knew that Frankie had been procuring, and everything just went downhill from there. I had never been in trouble in my life. I didn't know that police, you know, can intimidate me, and they did. They were doing their job, and I told them everything. After you had spoken to the police and told them the truth, what had really happened, what contact did you have with the Papalias? The only contact I had with the Papalias was through Steve Coaches. He came to see you? Oh, yes, yeah, several times. What did he say? Change your testimony. Change everything you said to the police, and I'll tell you what to say. And Steve's, Frank's muscle. Oh, yeah. He's the guy who does Small the dirty Small but work. mouthy, yeah. Mm hmm He came to see you to say what? He told me when the police found me, and they would, to lie. He wanted you to lie. Oh, he wanted me to Change lie. Change everything. Change Forget everything. Forget the truth. Yeah. Say it the way I and tell you to say And if it came down to it, I'd have to perjure myself on the stand. I wouldn't. Now I'm nervous. Right? I have nobody now. I know they're really going to be mad or upset. I mean, hell, here I am. I'm in the middle. So I asked for police protection. The police gave you a bug, a listening device. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you were carrying it in your purse? Yeah. And you met Steve Coaches in a restaurant? Yeah. What happened there? I had the bug in my purse 15 minutes. That's all. And he said to me, Shirley, I know you so well. But he said, if I didn't know you, I would feel you for a bug on you. And I just about had a fit then. But I said to him, Steve, if you started searching me for a bug or feeling me for a bug, You'd forget what the hell you were eating. And actually, that was the best thing I could say because he laughed. Oh. And that's the way I would talk to him so he never searched me. And he didn't find the bug? No, he didn't. Which you did have. I did have it right there. He's the boss. He's the guy who runs the family. Yes. How yes, would he, he think of you now, knowing what's taken place? Forget it. What would he, he think? He would say, forget her. Just, I hate to say it, but get rid of her. And that's what I want everybody to know. I don't want, I want everybody to know that I'm still here. And I don't want him to say forget her or get rid of her. Because I'm allowed to say what the hell I want to. He is. He says whatever he wants to say. He would say forget her. He would think of you as, as Oh, what? nothing. I just snuff her. Who, who is she to cause us problems? That's what I don't like. Who is he to tell anybody to forget me? You know? 
You really feel that they betrayed you? Oh, definitely. Definitely. That's what bothers me. This is why I'm... I want to say what I want to say. Look, I'm a, I'm a human being. I'm not... I never really did anything bad, you know? This is the Papalia family. Why can't I walk in my city, Hamilton? How come I have to leave the city? And they can still carry on with their business and go on with their life. And yet they dictate to everybody, everybody, what the hell they have to... Like, I mean, I... I see, I'm really getting emotional. Um, I feel that... They're really upset with me because they think I betrayed them. But let's, they haven't even got a clue that they betrayed me. I was a friend of theirs for 17 years, a very good friend. And they turned around and they, they threw me to the wolves. And now I can't come back in my city. I can't do what they can do. And they have got the criminal record, not me. I'm not a villain. I want to live my life. If people ask me what I did in Hamilton, I want to be able to tell the truth. That's the way I live today. I want to be free and clear. I want all the ghosts out of my closet. And that's what they are, ghosts. I want to just be me. And I'm happy now, but I want to get rid of all these ghosts. That's it, plain and simple. I don't want to be afraid every day.